Hello, my friends. My name is OMG, WTF, LOLFTWBRB. Welcome back to more WWE versus TEW, the series where we take the weekly events and shows ran by the WWE and book them in the game to see just how well WWE does against Total Extreme Wrestling, or if TEW will be the three-lettered company that brings down the WWE once and for all. Uh, we are booking the... I just had the date in my head, and... And now I forgot it. We're booking that edition of SmackDown that was after that edition of Raw. You, it'll say it in the description, or, you know, the title. You know what it is. The episode where Jeff Hardy took on Daniel Bryan. I've got nothing really else to add, so let's just jump in on this. So we get a 70C plus to start off the show as we get hype for the... Uh, the face-to-face -face between AJ Styles and Nakamura that will take place tonight where we will find out what match stipulation Shinsuke Nakamura will choose. And then we also get hype for the Daniel Bryan versus Jeff Hardy uh, matchup later on tonight. We then jump to a 63 solid C as we open up the show with Miz TV, who introduces, of course, his guest, The New Day. He had an interesting thing going on with the crowd there for a bit where honestly he can honestly get them to chant whatever he wanted. They chanted Miz TV and then they also chanted Miz and Mrs. Which being a huge Miz Mark myself, I might check out. We'll see. I'm not really into reality TV shows, but I love the Miz, so out of respect for, you know, being a fan of his for so long, I'll check it out. Nonetheless, he opens up Miz TV with the new day. He brings all three members out. He questions uh who, 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 or which, 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 which uh, New Day member is going to be in the Money in the Bank ladder match. They pretty much tiptoe around it, don't really give him an answer at all. Uh, it leads to uh, Miz getting frustrated, saying that he wants an answer, and it doesn't really matter what their answer is because he can beat any of them at any time, anywhere. Stuff like that, which leads to, you know, the New Day huddling around, oh, what are we going to do? And then... They decide it's going to be Big E, which Miz is like, all right, so Big E is going to be in the Money in the Bank. And they're like, ooh, no, 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 no. Big E's not going to be in the Money in the Bank. Big E's going to fight you tonight. And then Miz is like, well, if you're not going to give me an answer, then you're not getting a match. So Miz backs down. He walks all the way to the back where he runs into Paige. Paige pretty much, you know, tells him straight up, hey, you said it. You got to do it. So she pushes Miz out, and Miz versus Big E is going to be our opening match of the night. It lost heat for the men's Money in the Bank ladder match feud, but it did get the crowd hotter. Also, um, we might see... Actually, no, we are going to see quite a lot of gimmick changes happening probably in the next couple of videos here and there because I went around and I looked at all the people on the, uh, the roster and pretty much looked at all their gimmicks, and if I didn't agree with it, I changed it. So even though this one's not one of those that I changed because of that reasoning, it's mostly because... Well, Xavier Woods' this gimmick was poor before, so I figured, hey, why don't I just try to help him out a little bit, you know? Give give him a little bit of a bush, which, above average, there you go. Went from being a poor to an above average gimmick. You're welcome, Xavier. Miz, also improving in acting. Can he get any better? <laughs> 59 solid C rating here, as we have a decent matchup. The Miz goes over Big E. In 10 minutes, 44 seconds with the skull crushing finale after distraction from Cesaro. Uh, back and forth action. Not You know, Big E was kind of, you know, portrayed as like the stronger of the two, of course. But uh, again, Miz has really been showing a lot in these matches lately. Like I feel that um, before, like I, I mentioned in, in a previous video, he was kind of pushed as like a Weasley kind of guy. Whereas now he's getting a little bit more offense in his matches. So, um Hell, even New Day in the opening promo put Miz over hard, you know, even calling him arguably the greatest Intercontinental Champion of all time. Uh, nonetheless, at, during this match, as you can see right here, one of our road agent reports is that Xavier Woods was weak on the uh, the announce desk. Uh, Kofi Kingston technically should have been here as well because we, during commercial break, him and Xavier like switched on the table. It was at this point when the bar comes running down, showing that their feud is still going on, which is interesting because I debated taking it off. But um, so I'm glad I didn't. Bar comes down, they attack Xavier Woods, which leads to Kofi coming over, and they take out Kofi. Big E looks like he's about to hit the big ending on The Miz. Cesaro gets up on the apron and distracts Big E for Miz to hit him with the skull-crushing finale to pick up the victory. So Big E had an in-ring performance of a 58, one point better than The Miz, who had a 57. 
And the uh, men's money in the bank still losing heat here. Miz is improving in performance, though, so he's making the most out of this tonight. Solid 61 C rating here as we get a recap from last week. Daniel Bryan's beatdown on Big Cass showing uh, pretty much why Big Cass is out for the foreseeable future. We didn't even see Big Cass on crutches. I'm not going to lie to you guys. I mean, I'm sure, you know, I've heard this, you know, this is real. Big Cass is out once again, which is unfortunate, you know, because he just came back. Even though a lot of people were giving him a lot of slack, you know, he was just came back. He's put in a, a heavy storyline, so I like to give him a lot of, you know, leeway there and, you know, give him more of a chance to kind of warm up and get more comfortable in his role. Uh, nonetheless, it does suck if he's really out, but I, I just get the, the, the smidgen of a feeling that this is this is all fake. I just get the feeling that it's fake and that Cass is going to, you know, either cost Daniel Bryan or maybe he's not out for as long as, you know, they're going to be putting on. I don't think... I. I think Cast and uh, Brian are still going on because they're kind of still showing it off and hinting at it myself. So, well, we'll see where it goes. All right. Oh, didn't impress anything. Come on. There we go. Solid 60 rated C here as we get a uh, interview with Daniel Bryan, courtesy of Dasha Fuentes. Hope I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, Brian just cutting a promo on his uh, match against Jeff Hardy, his second chance and how uh, he took down Big Cass and all that, and how much it means to him that he's getting his opportunity at Money in the Bank, and how Money in the Bank previously, you know, saved his uh, his career. So, here's the thing with Daniel Bryan. I'm going to kind of leave this guy's this to you guys, but I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of mixed here. So, Daniel Bryan's gimmick was authority figure. I figured, you know, we have to change that. He's no longer an authority figure. But... His gimmick was too soon, so I can't change it yet or else it'll go negative. But at the same time, I really shouldn't care about that stuff because, I mean, this is WWE and, you know, uh, what, what's the word I'm looking for? I, I should just have to do it anyway because that's what WWE does. But, again, this is also taken into an account that, you know, the Who... Well, it's not even the Who's fault here because this time it's randomly generated sometimes by the game, like... His Daniel Bryan's gimmick could have been stale at the opening start, so it really just goes by how you figure. So I don't really feel like I should punish WWE for randomness that happens in the game. I try to keep randomness as, out as much as I possibly can, which is why I'm so worried with like the TV networks and whatnot. Which, speaking of that, I gotta get Fox to uh, take SmackDown, so I gotta do that. Nonetheless... I'll leave it to you guys. Should we go ahead and pull the trigger on Daniel Bryan's change, or should we let it build a little bit to make sure it doesn't go bad, you know, so much? I don't think it'll be too bad, but there is a possibility it could be, like, poor, which would even be worse than his gimmick right now, which I believe is rated as, like, great. Very good. There you go. So, nonetheless. I digress. It's up to you guys. 55 C- minus as we get uh, Lana checking herself out in the mirror as she gets ready for her matchup later on against Billy Kay, which is also hyped. And even though Aiden English wasn't here, I made him a manager because he accompanies Lana to the ring here tonight. But what's interesting here is Lana and Aiden English have excellent chemistry together. Rusev, my man, you better watch yourself, boy. Also, Aiden English still teasing that face turn. Gain some heat to the Money in the Bank feud. Lana rated on sex appeal, though, so don't, don't get too excited, boys. I mean, you can get excited. I'm just... Don't get excited, you know, that, oh, wow, this actually did good. <laughs> All right. 36 D minus. This is more like it. As uh, Aiden English comes out and he does his rap, which I hate when he raps. I prefer him to just sing. His rap is just, uh, I'm not a fan of Aiden. It, it, to me, Aiden really doesn't have the voice or, I guess, the tempo to really rap. But um, nonetheless, he does a little rap or introduction for Lana. He's uh, doing the whole Lana number one or something like that and uh, out comes Lana for her match yes before we can get to the uh, next segment though we get our pointless commercial break courtesy of John Cena thank you Cena always a pleasure to work with you before we can get to the actual matchup itself as well we have to get to this other opening segment like two pre-match promos for this mat one match and it's stupid short, too. 52 D plus for the Iconics coming out and mocking Lana and Aiden English. Singing Lana is a loser to her and just putting themselves all over the place. 
Uh, they actually got some pretty good heat here. Now, I, I, it could be annoyance heat or legitimate heat, but they got some good heat here. So the Iconics, in my opinion, are starting to get over here. Uh, Billy Kay's gimmick is fine. There's really no point of changing it. I am going to change Peyton Royce to a Prima Dama, though. So let's see how that does. It got below average. So what was her previous gimmick? Below average. So she, she's pretty much in the same place. Uh, Aiden English, still not turning him, but I do think that they will turn him. Because that looks like what the uh, the rumors are pointing at for Rusev Day. 33E plus for our Money in the Bank qualifier matchup here. Lana going over Billy Kay in 2 minutes, 41 seconds with a slots. Or what the hell is a slot spine buster? Sit out spine buster, even though she really got her with the face buster or X Factor or Bella Buster. Call it what you want. The Lana Buster. After a distraction from Aiden English and Peyton Royce, pretty much this match was a throwaway match. Right when the match begins, Aiden English pulls out a Lana Day sign and uh, parades it around the ring while Billy Kay and Peyton Royce go over there and mock him. Lana comes out. She takes out Peyton Royce, throws in Billy Kay, hits her with the Bella Buster. One, two, three. Lana's in the Money in the Bank. And she wins her first ever singles match. Look at that. Lana really off her game. Aiden English did some good work ringside. We already knew about Lana and Aiden's chemistry, which that's pretty cool. I don't know how often we'll see it, but it will help Lana if she gets pushed a little more. Uh, cooled the crowd, unfortunately, but whatever. Lana with a 21. Billy Kay showing improvement here with a 39. What is this? Oh, it's probably just Aiden. Yeah. No worker improvements, though. 36 D minus as we get hype for our number one contendership match for the SmackDown tag team titles as the Usos will take on the Good Brothers, Anderson and Gallows, later on tonight. And then we get a E24 solid E rating here for the Selena Vega Andrade CN almost pre promo package, whatever you want to call it. Uh, as they are just kind of disgusted at what they were presented last week, pretty much wanting competition on SmackDown and are going to take what they want. I believe Selena's gimmick is changing here. Yeah, she's an old school heel, and I, I felt pretentious would have been a, a better fit for her. So, got a rating of average. It's not too bad. It did um, it did worse than her other gimmick, but old school heel is so basic, I felt. Selena Vega, she's got a more unique gimmick than just that. We then hype up the fact that Andrade Cien Almas is in action next. 28 solid E for that. As we slowly try to get Andrade over. The match itself gets a 41 solid D here. As local talent Matt Logan. That's his real independent name. No no name for Matt Logan. Just that's what he goes by. Uh, they didn't give me a name on WWE. So there you have it. Matt Logan go, or takes on Andrade Cien Almas. Unfortunately for him he loses in a minute 49 seconds after La Sombra. Again not sure if that's what the name of Andrade's finisher is. I, don't, I never heard him say it, so... Uh, Logan was off his game. Come on, Logan! I give you an opportunity and you're off your game? Vega and Almas, good pairing. Very good pairing. Oh, never mind. That's just the V in Vega's name that made me think it said very good. Color commentary helped us out. Matt Logan with a 23. Andrade with a 48. Matt Logan, although off his game, made the most of his appearance here tonight, though, and is improving in rumble, technical, and performance skill. 47 solid D as Dasha Fuentes interviews Carmella on uh, Osk, because apparently I don't know how to type an A at the very end of Asuka. Uh, just pretty much Carmella crom cutting a promo on Asuka saying, oh, my title reign looks like it's up now. Psych, uh, you know, I beat Charlotte Flair twice. Did I mention I beat Charlotte Flair? Typical annoying Carmella. Getting over, to be honest. I mean, it's annoying, but it's what she wants to accomplish out of it. So, uh, Pretty much putting over the fact that she beat Charlotte, she can beat Asuka. It gained heat to the storyline as well, so good on them. And honestly, I, I, I forgot that they were fighting each other until I saw that promo. 71 B- minus as we get the uh, hype for the match stipulation that will be coming up next between Nakamura and, Shins Nakamura and Shinsuke. Nakamura and AJ Styles. So the confrontation between the two. Oh, come on. I hate when I don't press this. Solid 62C for the confrontation as uh, Renee Young introduces the WWE Champion AJ Styles, then Shinsuke Nakamura. Nakamura plays off that, you know, he doesn't really understand what AJ means when he just tells him, cut to the chase, let's get to the stipulation. 
he tells him to relax and all that. He he plays around with AJ, shows him, you know, the previous week where uh, he beat him. He, you know, just really uh, playing around with AJ until, it, you know, it evolves to him, you know, mocking AJ, saying, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to hit you with the knee to the face, knee to the face. Shinsuke goes to punch him. AJ ducks. They go out to the ring. They brawl around, that, you know, all the way into the crowd. Nakamura eventually puts him down for a 10 count, putting over the fact that it's going to be a last man standing match at Money in the Bank, which could go horribly wrong because, as I said before, this would be the fourth time they fought each other, and TEW usually nicks people for that. But if you guys think I should turn that off, I will turn it off. I don't think I should, though. Uh, Byron Saxton, come on, you need to step it up. Crowd was hot for this, though. Renee Young looked dreadful. Step it up, Renee. Shinsuke, unfor or, unfortunately... Shinsuke came across well. That's not unfortunate. That's a good thing. Styles also improving in acting and learning to show more charisma. So, there you go, guys. It did lose heat to the feud, though, which is unfortunate. 48 D-plus as we hype up Brian versus Jeff Hardy later on tonight. And that the Usos versus Anderson and Gallows is next. Before we jump into the match, we get a 46 solid D for a pre-match promo where Anderson and Gallows, honestly, I'm... The if that's really the way Carl Anderson talks, it just doesn't sound natural for him. He's all like, y'all, and stuff like that. I don't know, it just, it sounded pretty forced on Anderson's part. But Anderson and Gallows putting over that this is their opportunity, and they don't care if they have to go through the Uso brothers, you know, for the good brothers to get a shot at the Bludgeon brothers or something like that. Usos are pretty much say, you know, this isn't Japan, this isn't Raw, this is SmackDown, and you're in the Uso penitentiary. It leads to a little bit of a mini brawl on the outside before jumping into the uh, match itself. Match itself gets a 52 D plus rating here. Decent wrestling, but not much way in heat. Anderson and Gallows go over the Usos in 7 minutes, 2 seconds after Carl Anderson defeated Jimmy Uso with the Magic Killer. Uh, Luke Gallows is getting better at his gimmick. Anderson and Gallows have great chemistry, as do the Usos. Gallows is improving, or excuse me, Gallows in ring performance was a 46. It looks like it was the worst of the match as well. Carl Anderson with a 52, the best of the match. Jay Uso with a 48, and Jimmy Uso with a 51. So it's interesting how they're kind of really close to each other. Like Gallows and Jay Uso and Anderson and Jimmy Uso gain some heat to the Bludgeon Brothers versus uh, Good Brothers feud. Also, Anderson improving in performance. So, looks like Anderson and Gallows are kind of like, I don't want to call them the first real test, but they're kind of like the next in line because I don't think them, they're winning, which is unfortunate because I hope they do get a push out of this. We get a recap of the brawl between Styles and Nakamura that we just saw not too long ago, 72 B-. minus. We then jump to a Money in the Bank qualifier matchup here between Naomi and Sonya Deville. Deville getting a second chance since she... Technically, it wasn't pinned or submitted last week in the match between Mandy Rose and Becky Lynch as well. 36 D- minus for this up matchup here. Uh, not much way in heat and terrible wrestling. Naomi going over Sonya Deville in 4 minutes, 56 seconds after a fast roll-up. Rose doing some good work ringside. She, of course, managing Sonya Deville in this matchup. Cooled the crowd. Naomi with a 43 in-ring performance. Sonya Deville with a 31. And what do we got here? Oh, uh, Manny Rose with a gimmick change. Got an average for her diva gimmick. It's better than what her cocky gimmick was, which was below average. No worker improvements. Naomi now joins the Money in the Bank, which leaves only one spot left for the women. So as of right now, it looks like Lana is going to be the SmackDown female left out of the Money in the Bank. But I could be wrong. I have to look at popularity. Who knows? Lana could have got a big boost from this. 68 C plus for the Renee Young interview with Jeff Hardy. Jeff Hardy is a... I don't know if he's broken or just a weirdo, man, but he comes out and he's just like, yeah, right when he comes out of the door, then he meets up with Renee Young. It wasn't like Renee Young was there. He just came out and shouted for no reason. Uh, Young, of course, asking him about this Money in the Bank opportunity. Jeff Hardy puts over the fact that, you know, this is the first time ever that him and Daniel Bryan have ever fought. Speaking of which, I forgot to mention this, but Big E and Miz was also apparently the first time those two have ever met one-on-one. -on -one. So I guess tonight was a night of first. But uh, Jeff Hardy, he puts over the opportunity saying, you know, he's got a lot of, I don't even remember. He just had a lot of weird words, a lot of big words, I guess. You know, words, I wouldn't expect Jeff Hardy really to know, but there you have it. 
uh, putting over, you know, how he can do a lot of things with ladders, and but he's going to take it step by step, just like he, you know, he would with the ladder and the money in the bank. And tonight he's got to take out Daniel Bryan. And uh, there you have it, 68 C plus for the Jeff Hardy pre-match promo. Come on, I pressed it. Don't lie to me. All right, maybe I didn't. 63 solid C as Samoa Joe makes his way down for commentary for our main event of the night. Before we get to the main event, we hype up next week as it'll be a 50. Or it'll be a 53 C minus 53 C minus for the hype up for next week as it'll be the new day. Kofi Kingston, Xavier Woods, and Big E taking on the Bar and the Miz. Six man tag action for next week, but we get to our main event of the night. First time ever. 62 solid C. You would expect this to do better, but Samoa Joe probably brought it down. Jeff Hardy isn't really as over as honestly he probably should be, but whatever. So, I mean, also being done in like the Colt area always could have an effect. I'm not really sure how much an effect of that really has, but it can always have an effect. You never, you never know. I don't know myself. So, superb matchup here. Daniel Bryan, which I changed his picture. Thank God I was sick of that authority figure. Daniel Bryan goes over Jeff Hardy in 11 minutes, 18 seconds with the yes lock. I don't believe he hit him with a yes lock. I think it was more of like a figure four or something like that. Nonetheless, Daniel Bryan moves on and he will be in the Money in the Bank ladder match. Samoa Joe is pretty weak. Deserve better announcing. Thank you, Joe. <laughs> Jeff Hardy with a 62 in-ring performance and Daniel Bryan with an 81. Bryan still improving as well. Improving in rumble, flying, and performance. Good on you, Bryan. And I believe this is just the, yeah, just for Bryan, so... And then we close out the night with Samoa Joe bursting Daniel Bryan's bubble as he gets on the mic and tells him, I don't know why you're celebrating because next week you got me. And uh, there you have it, 71 B- minus to end off the show. And SmackDown's final rating is apparently not here because I didn't press end the show. Yeah, we're good. SmackDown's final rating is a 77 solid B. Still no specific comments to be made about it because we did drop in popularity or drop in... Uh, I guess size, we are now a cult company, so we won't make popularity boost for a little while here, but 77 solid B still for SmackDown is not bad. I, I don't really understand where these ratings are coming from. I'm not sure if how much being a cult company affects those ratings, if it boosted up even more because these are like, I guess, supposed to be stars on a little company. Nonetheless, WWE's on a roll apparently as they're building this up, and uh, I don't know how, but uh, I don't have much else to add here. In fact, I'm in kind of a rush right now, so I'm going to just try to end off the video here. No little outros, no uh, subscribe or anything, so uh, you guys have a good one. I'll see you next time.